Welcome to the podcast, Amber. I'm so excited to have you today. We're going to talk about some really uh, hot topics, I think. It'll be fun. Yeah, it will be fun. So um, essential oils is really, really popular right now. Um, so for everybody listening who has never met Amber before, I'm going to give you a little intro here. Amber Duncan is a clinical aromatherapist specializing in the teaching of safe and appropriate essential oils use with a special focus on pregnancy and labor delivery. Amber brings well over 500 hours of education and training to multiple easy to understand workshops through introducing an education only no sales perspective, students learn what the essential oils can do and how little is really needed to create an amazing result. She also offers a four CEU course for LMTs approved by NCBTMB. You're going to have to tell me what that is. That's a long acronym. In addition to teaching aromatherapy, Amber is a full-time mom to three little ones, ages eight, six, and three. She's also certified Reiki level two and is currently back to school to get her associates in nursing degree to lead to an RN licensure. That's really awesome. So you got a lot of training already. You're getting more. Sounds familiar. I feel like I'm a certificate junkie. I have to go mm. get this training. All of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> get all. Well, yeah. you start learning and it's just so much darn fun. Yeah, I, I honestly truly do love learning. Um, and I feel, especially in the holistic fields, you cannot stop. Yeah. If you ever stop and really truly call yourself an expert and the go-to, I'm like, you've stopped learning. Yeah. Yeah. There, once you think you know it all, yeah. Yeah. Once you think you know it all, you like date yourself because <laughs> I mean, especially with aromatherapy, there's new studies coming out almost every day. Constantly. Like I, like people go, oh, can I use this oil? I'll go, let me get back to you on that. And I literally, I check almost daily if there's any new research out because you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And if something else has come out showing that it's not safe, I want to make sure that my clients get that info when it happens, yeah. not a week later, two weeks later, six months later. I always, <laughs> I'm a knowledge junkie. Well, and you know, that's what's nice about um, being kind of in the functional field because you don't just go through training and then you know it all and then you you have patients or clients or whatever. In the functional world, it's so much what is new, what is exciting, what is the research showing, and we don't have to wait for it to go through, you know, the school system and then get into our offices. We literally can find out what the research is and implement implement it immediately, which is fantastic. Right. It's amazing. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I want people to sort of get to know, um, you know, essential oils is huge, but your passion is really about using them safely. It's a really different perspective than I've heard other people talk about it because you'll see, you know, I'm sure you get frustrated on Pinterest and on Facebook and all these different places. Oh, I can't even go on Pinterest. Yes, <laughs> use this oil for dot, dot, dot. And, you know, as much as you want because it's a natural thing, but your perspective is really, and I love this when we talked, we sat down and talked about this before we recorded, was your, your quote that if you're not reaching for the medicine cabinet, you shouldn't be reaching for an oil. So I love that. We're going to get to that. Um, but first, what really interested you in learning more about aromatherapy? What was sort of your uh, yeah, catalyst? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I wow. Um. So backstory a little bit on me for everybody. Uh, my husband is active duty, and I was working on my RN degree when he got an assignment to Okinawa, Japan, uh, which floored the crud out of me. Uh, I had never <laughs> lived overseas been there sure lived there no um and we had an 18 month old at the time so i had to stop what i was doing as military spouses everywhere can attest to we drop it all and we move um and i did that and i got to japan and there's such a passion there um for that integrative let's find the root cause what is really the matter um situation and they do use aromatherapy and they use herbs and they use homeopathy and it's all a part of one practice it's not oh this is the answer it's well that's a piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. let's get the full answer so i really got into that whole area i just we landed i got culture shocked like anything else and six months in i felt more at home in Okinawa, Japan than I have ever felt anywhere. Uh, and we've lived in Ohio for 15 plus years. But, um, 
you know, on and again, off again. So the fact that I could only spend six months somewhere and just feel like it was the place to be mm. was, is amazing. Um, so I really just got into that and I started with one of the, you know, a lot of friends do MLMs because when you're military, your job has to move with you sure. and it's really hard to keep a job as a military spouse because you move and sometimes on six weeks notice. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, a lot of them do MLM. So I started with one of the MLMs and I'm a very sciencey background. Once again, I was start working on my RN before we left and I have a BA in psychology and I'm sitting there and they're like, Hey, drop these, you know, oil drops into your water. And I'm like, but that eats through styrofoam. You're showing me how strong it is. What is that doing to my esophagus? You know, what is that doing to my stomach? Why am I getting heartburn when I do this? You know, can you explain that to me? Oh, it's natural. It's not hurting you. Oh goodness. Yeah. Ooh. And I'm like, Always listen like, to your body. Your body always, needs help. Yeah, always. always listen to your body. Let's put that forefront. Can we flash that in letters across the screen? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, um, if your body is telling you there's something wrong, mm. chances are there is. Um, if you put an oil on yourself topically and you get red and itchy, your body is telling you it doesn't need that. That's that causing a problem. Um, a lot of people will tell you it's a detox reaction. And as cute as that is to think that your skin is going to do that right away. It's actually an inflammatory response. Mm -hmm. It's negative. It's not a good thing. You don't want to keep doing it. It's bad. Um, but that's, nah, splicing hairs. Um, <laughs> well, that's important to know because a lot of people that are using these in home, you know, they might have heard Put something like that. Like, Hey, um, you know, like, uh, let's just throw peppermint out there. It's a little bit of a zippy one, right? It so maybe that, that, that would burn someone's yep. skin. And, um, if that's the reaction, then maybe they shouldn't be using it, not right. just, uh, diluting Topically, it more. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the neat use, especially when you're taking the oil straight from the bottle and putting them on your skin, I'm like, eh. um, at the end of the day, when you break down an essential oil, it's chemical compounds. Mm -hmm. It breaks down, it's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen backbone, and then there's little other things thrown in, aromatic rings, and all sorts of chemistry fun that I'll try not, should I spare everybody from? <laughs> that's a whole, that's a whole half hour right there, I'm sure. <laughs> Only a half hour, I wish. <laughs> um, but, so when you break it down, whether or not it gets into your body is based off of its chemical and molecular weight and how well your skin is doing to actually keep it away. Um, that's why when we talk about working with newborns, their skin absorbs stuff from the outside really well because it, it has them set up its defense mechanisms mm -hmm. as well as an adult's. So when you're putting it straight on a baby, they're getting a lot more into them than they really need. And the whole point of using topical is that you get a low and slow effect as opposed to when you inhale it, um, or in some cases, if you work with an aromatic medicine practitioner and you're ingesting it, that gets it in more quickly. The topical is supposed to give you that low and slow kind of a situation where you get it over an extended period of time. Interesting. Okay. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to put too much into a baby because their liver and their kidneys aren't developed. Neither are their lungs for that matter. Um, so you don't want to overwhelm their body systems when they're so new and they haven't had a chance yet to come <laughs> to that situation and start um, really having their own defense mechanisms because yeah, uh, you can actually just hurt them a lot faster mm. than you can most adults. So uh, this wasn't a planned question, but this brings up breastfeeding. So mm -hmm. if a mom is ingesting or applying a lot of oils, um, how uh, important is that in terms of paying attention to, you know, if you are breastfeeding because the baby's still getting exposed to all of those? Absolutely. It's yeah. huge. Um, when it comes to breastfeeding, you really need to, um, and on my Facebook page and on a group that we'll discuss in a little bit, um, I have a list of oils that you don't use with certain age groups. Okay. Um, and when you're talking newborn to three months, you try to not use any essential oils around them, whatever, because they're getting exposed to a lot of stuff anyway you don't want to increase that exposure. Let their bodies come to it. Um, it's, you know, like we're seeing how allergies are popping up with people, kids who start foods too young, um, solids. It's kind of the same thing. You're increasing the risk of an allergy later on, the sooner you expose them to that situation. I'm glad you said that because I think a lot of people would probably think the opposite. The sooner a baby is exposed to something, the less likely they would be to get an allergy. So that's, that's a, an important distinction. I'm glad you it brought is. that up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. A lot of people don't see that, understand that. And that's why, you know, we are seeing so many food allergies now is because parents were starting 
throwing their kids on cereals and things at three, four months to get them to sleep through the night. That's a whole nother situation. <laughs> get, bring out the yeah, but know. no, it's it's important um to take that. I mean, what's the what is the most natural progression? You know, so before we had easy access to all these convenience foods, what what was the baby doing? The baby was probably breastfed for a year and a half, a year two, plus, maybe yeah. longer year. Yeah. And that was their sole source of food. So, um, you know, it, I understand sometimes people can't um, physically do that. Do that. What's Absolutely. the closest you can get to that nutrition and um, to set that baby up for success? Natural is always um, Natural is best. Is possible, but yeah. I have tons of friends and I've had clients that can't get there and that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, fed is best at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, right. Um, but, you know, looking to formulas. I mean, formulas are a magical, magical thing. I mean, they didn't exist so many years ago. And now look, we can feed our babies, even if we do have, you know, problems with our own breast supply. I mean, it used to be that you would just hand the baby off to a milkmaid um, or somebody <laughs> else to, you know, do it for you. You know, like there would be people that would nurse for you if you couldn't do it. We don't have that now. People would lose their crud um, <laughs> you don't know what she's eating you don't know what you know like right, yeah. that's no longer a thing um which you have a hole on that one um so i mean formulas are amazing but we don't want to start them on solids because that's not what their bodies like once again their stomachs their livers their kidneys aren't ready yet mm -hmm. they need that time to develop and some people just love throwing the kitchen sink at them because you know oh i need my sleep Right. Yeah. I get and I it. I to say too, on the formulas, you'd have to be careful uh, which ones you're choosing. Again, yeah. trying to mimic nature as closely as possible. As closely as you can. You know, yeah. but if you can't afford to, you know. Yeah. They're the saving lives. lives. Yeah. They're literally saving lives. They are literally saving lives. So, I mean, yeah. if you really can't afford to, you know, pre-mix your own formulas out of all the best out there, <laughs> you know, do what yeah. you can afford yeah. and just keep them on that longer as opposed to just throwing them on the rice cereals and the foods because they don't need it yet. Um, they just don't need it yet. Just like they don't <laughs> need much oils yet. Yeah, uh, yeah. They just don't need it. Uh, so, you know, when you're breastfeeding, you have to stay away from all those oils that are on those lists. And that's okay. pretty much all the oils. Um, there's not a whole lot that you can do with a newborn or even up to a year old. You really got to be very careful because of their body systems. Mm. Um, and so even when you are using it, if you want to use it to help you relax, you know, putting some on the back of your shoulder, um, using your own aromatherapy inhaler, the sniff sticks. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah. talked about those. These are really great, yeah. Yeah. Um, please Sounds like a lipstick, yeah. The, yeah, there you go, lipstick, sure. Um, so these ones are the aluminum, and they have a little glass vial inside where you have the essential oil on there. Mm -hmm. And these are perfect because these can go in your pocket, in the diaper bag. Um, I have little yarn cases where if it's three of them in there, one for each kid. That way the oils that are on them are age appropriate. And I can throw it into my purse, throw it into the diaper bag, and then I can literally give them their specific situation. Mm. Um, if I need one to help me get through a test, <laughs> silly nursing Focus because some of them help you focus. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, for energy, yeah. Exactly. Um, I have a blend with rosemary and spearmint because rosemary has shown in clinical study to increase memory retention by up to 50%, wow. which is amazing when you're studying for tests or taking it. Um, and then has a little bit of spearmint in there to help you stay awake. So because really quickly, when we sat down, you mentioned this. Um, so let our listeners know, why would you choose that uh, aroma stick versus diffusing it in the air? You would, um, my personal my personal opinion um, is to pretty much always use a, an aroma stick because when you're working with aromatherapy, how we kind of discuss that if you're not reaching for the medicine cabinet, don't reach for the oils. You are literally, in most cases, dosing someone with a medication. You're trying to get them to calm down. You're trying to get them to be energized. You're trying to get them to focus. If you wouldn't hand your two-year-old your other child's ADHD meds, you don't need to be trying to use this same thing. You're trying to you don't need to diffuse against the whole house. Not everybody in that house necessarily needs that particular medicine. Yeah. Quotes for that one. yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about the safety aspect that we touched a little bit on this when we talked about applying it to your skin and people having different reactions. Safety is a huge, huge focus um, on how you educate your clients and work with people. So can you give us a few examples of what uh, 
an unsafe use would be or maybe some safety practices, just sort of your overall perspective on safety versus unsafe practices. Absolutely. Um, as we kind of touched on, uh, neat use is pretty much always considered unsafe at this point. Across the board. Um, we have people who, aromatherapists who have been in the field for 30 plus years, and now they're allergic to lavender, which was considered the safest of safe oils because they put their hands in it so much that now their body's going, yeah, no. Interesting, um, yeah. Because once again, you don't know when that allergy is going to develop. Too um, much. Too much of a good thing. Too much of a good thing always happens. Um, so always, always, always dilute your oils um, if you're applying topically. And once again, topical is great for localized situation. Your knee hurts, your elbow hurts. Um, you've got a headache, great, go topical. Headache, obviously applied to the back of the neck. Your knee hurts, please apply it to your knee. Your shoulder hurts, please apply it to your shoulder. Applying it to your feet isn't gonna help your knee and your shoulder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so that's not like, a, a, what do they call that? Um, where you use like the pressure points? Oh, you can use, the pressure points are amazing, but okay. you adding the oils isn't going to the same. do, I mean, you can start getting into energetics of essential oils and at that point, but then you're working with less than a drop in a full ounce. Like you're truly talking about energetics mm. and that's not the same thing as most people are using. Um, that's a whole, how many that's conversations? Other, we have like 10 podcasts right here in the first five minutes. Oh, how that's many amazing. conversations that's can we have? So um, interesting. Okay. Energetics is amazing, but you're really at energetics. You're talking about a smidgen of a percent so most people are using 50 100 times that so we're not, for the most part if you want to use your points reflexology go for it awesome but as far as adding the essential oils it's not going to really do anything besides make you smell pretty which is fine i mean if you that's what you want to do go it for works, it it works yeah okay i'm all, right. all for it so always 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 dilute i have uh dilution charts up on my on my business page and on the essential oil safety for parents group um that you guys will all have links to um yeah uh, list those out really quickly are, and i'll put them in right. the show notes all right so the essential oil safety for parents is just type that into the facebook search bar you'll <laughs> find me essential <laughs> oil you'll, safety for parents for parents yes okay. and then my uh, business is holistic health helper LLC once again just type that into that Facebook search bar it's amazing you'll probably even see a picture of my face all right awesome all right perfect um so that makes it really easy to find me I do not hide well that's what I always tell people <laughs> I just don't hide that's good um it's always easy to find me uh so yes yeah, so dilution is key and then really truly using the aromatherapy inhalers or even a cotton ball with a drop or two in a baggie, amazing. Because that way you can, like I said, dose the person you're trying to. Mm. You wanna use it on the person who actually needs it. Um, this is where that pet safety comes in because people are using diffusers and you know their cats are having seizures and this and that. And if they would just use the aroma stick versus putting it in the whole house, all of a sudden that problem's gone. Okay. Um, so this is really, really common. So I guess I would ask, is there ever a situation where you would use the diffuser personally? Personally, I don't. I have okay. two cats, two dogs, three tiny humans, and a bearded dragon. Um, <laughs> so there is literally, in, in my household, there is no time that I would ever feel to use a, diff a diffuser. I have used incense when I want to get kind of a whole house smell going on, um, but those I use like the actual true frankincense resin as opposed to um, an, an incense cone or anything like that because you don't know where those fragrances are coming from. Um, <coughs> right. so I use the true frankincense <coughs> resin. Um, I just joked. It's okay. I think male, I think male's here if you hear the little barker in the back. Excuse me. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So really it is a, it is a, pretty big concern if you have children if you have pets diffusing it's not really an option uh, you know a lot of people do it and everybody's fine so I won't say never do it I personally will never do it um okay but I hate but if something happens to you it wasn't my you, fault yeah you don't want to be sure <laughs> I understand yeah absolutely uh, so what are some um you have a really awesome focus on pregnancy, labor, and delivery, which is a really cool niche. Um, and again, this is so uh, widespread right now in terms of anybody can use it. It's so safe. Um, you know, use it when you're Throw pregnant. Throw your newborn. Throw, yeah, you use it, you know, you diffuse like you're saying, and this is something that really concerns you. So what are some uses that are safe that would be helpful in pregnancy, labor, and delivery? What are some ways that you would use that? Yeah. So after your first trimester, um, and so no, none when you're a newborn and none, 
uh, during, during the first, the first trimester. trimester. Okay. Right. Um, both times, once again, you're talking about the really sensitive growth aspect going on. Okay. Um, and we just don't want to risk injuring or messing with that in any way. In a lot of cases, you won't see the damage done until years or decades later. And unfortunately, then it's too late. Um, there are oils that can cause, a, uh, have the potential to cause abortion. There are oils that can affect implantation. There's oils that promote your period. These are all things that you don't want happening within those mm -hmm. first few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever I have somebody who's trying to conceive, um, I have them literally, as soon as they know they've ovulated, we stop all oils use. It is, okay, did that ovulation test show positive? Done. Put away all the oils. Don't touch them until we know. Um, and that is literally just for the safety, especially for the women who are having trouble conceiving, which I see a lot. You want to remove all of that extra stuff that could be causing your body harm because mm. you don't know which piece of the puzzle is really causing you to have trouble. Um, it could be a hormone. It could be something you're adding on later. Okay. Um, I've had people taking those little peppermint beadlets, one of the company's cells, um, having trouble getting pregnant, having trouble getting pregnant. Stop those for me. Two months later, we're pregnant. Wow. Huh. Interesting. Coincidental? Maybe. You know, we, there's no sign. We don't have a test on it. Sure. You know, but what we do know is that she stopped. She got pregnant, which is what she was trying to do in the first place. Yeah. You know, wow. and so peppermint can be one of those. It's not for everybody. Um, it can be in a menagogue. Some people say yes. Some people say no. Um, it really just depends on the sensitivity of the mom in question. So it's better to avoid it. Um, you know, in second trimester, um, especially, caveat that, um, as long as you've had pre successful previous pregnancies <laughs> and you're not um, on, for you weren't on fertility meds trying to get pregnant in the first place, um, second trimester really opens up your window. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, okay. Using ginger to help with nausea or red mandarin is actually one of my favorites for all the way from second trimester all the way through um, because it's a citrus so it's really uplifting but it still has that calming because who doesn't love watching walking through you know citrus grove and just smelling all that it's peaceful yeah. versus okay. you know yeah. you're That's happy what you, need. <laughs> <laughs> you need I promise three kids in you just need to be calm um, <laughs> and you know it can help it can help with depression symptoms and um, it's not necessarily an antidepressant. I'm not diagnosing, treating, curing, sure. preventing anything. Um, don't send the FDA after me, please. Um, but it has this well-rounded balance to it. And it just, it smells really good. And it just helps bring that calm. And it can help with nausea too. So it's one of those oils that is just perfect to have in your bag. Um, so yeah. And then I have a list of recommended uh companies on my Facebook page as well. So okay. you can check those out <coughs> as we go. Haha, -ha, fun. Um, awesome. Okay, so you'd use a couple during pregnancy. What about labor and delivery? How can, and you, you'd use again. The, 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 yeah, that aroma inhaler is perfect. Um, with labor and delivery, a lot of labor wards right now are starting to bring in diffusers and now they're starting to roll them back. They were like mm -hmm. bringing them out and then it's like, wait, you know, one, you don't want a baby coming into an essential oil soaked air which is basically what you're doing. You don't know who's walking by and if they're allergic. And then most importantly, when a mom goes through transition, she tends to hate smells. Something she used to love, now she cannot stand. And if it's been going in a diffuser, that smell ain't going anywhere. Yeah. It is there until it dissipates. Um, so this is where the aroma sticks or using that cotton ball in the baggie come in great because you can literally throw it back in the bag get it away from her <laughs> because the last thing she wants to be dealing with is now feeling nauseous or hating the smell while trying to get through transition. Mm. That's a hard enough time in any woman's life. Let's not add to it. Um, not everybody loves, some people love it. I love it because I like getting to push. So it comes right after that. Um, ah. but <laughs> something I have control over. Yeah, sure. I'm very type A. Let me have control over it. Um, whole pregnancy, I have no control. I'm just there for the ride. Right. Pushing, I have control. That's hilarious. Um, just ask the doctors. They you get to be involved. Pre <laughs> exactly. I actually get to do something, I feel. Um, so the aroma sticks are the perfect go-to. Um, or like I said, the cotton, cotton swabs and the baggies. Perfect. Because you can get it out. Um, and you don't want to, once again, you don't want the newborn coming into that smell. Um, well, more of the chemicals in, hanging in the air. Mm. Um, you wouldn't want Lysol scent all around you. You don't want the diffuser going either. Um, 
because you want to protect their lungs. Their yeah. lungs. Let so, their poor little lungs work. So calming and nausea, is there anything that these can do for pain during delivery? Yeah, we've actually seen um, in research things like jasmine and rose can help apply topically. Um, for that, though, I highly recommend they have um, talk to an aromatherapist, um, and if they have a doula or if they have a midwife, make sure that the, if they want to use it, they're well. Tra those I people are trained in the field um, because there are certain contraindications occasionally for things. So it's better to make sure that their full medical history matches the use of them, mm. um, mainly because we just want you to be safe. Yeah. S silly safety in labor. <laughs> um, you know, especially if you're doing it at home or a birth center that's far away from a hospital. If something goes wrong, you have a chance of literally losing yours or the baby's life. Um, so we don't want to push anything that could potentially cause a problem. Mm. Um, those rose and jasmine tend to be really good. Um, but like I said, there's just a few little nitpicky things. Um, they're more than welcome to message me um, or have a consult with me to go over especially if they have a weird pregnancy labor history, um, it's always better to double check with a professional than just to leave it to chance. Most, you know, for most people, they're perfectly fine. But do you want to be that one that's not? No. I, I'm never that one. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I'm that's so the, interesting. I'm always of the better safe than sorry mindset. Person. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's just me. So, um, all right. So for women out there who aren't pregnant, aren't planning on getting pregnant, um, we've talked about ways that are unsafe and, and a few things that can do to help, uh, moms and things like that through, through labor and delivery. But what about women who, who aren't pregnant, aren't planning on getting pregnant, but have maybe irregular cycles or painful periods, things like that. Are there things that they can use in a safe way that they can experiment with? Oh, they can actually, um, clary sage is showing great for helping with balancing hormones. Um, you start with a really low dilution. We're talking like 1% applied to your lower abdomen. Once again, so it gets in there low and slow, takes its time. So when you yeah. talk about percentages, how does someone uh, figure that out in terms of the oil in the yeah. bottle? <laughs> Crazy math. Yeah. Um, so one ounce of carrier is about two tablespoons. So if you're in your kitchen measuring out coconut oil, two tablespoons is about an ounce. And 1% is five to six drops okay. of your essential oil in there. Um, I haven't checked recently, but um, as of the last time I checked, your two big MLMs um, actually have an orifice reducer that's a little bit bigger than most. So you can actually drop that in like half um, if you're okay. using one of those two big companies because they tend to put out a larger drop. Um, but I have to see if they've corrected that or not. Mm. But to be safe, you'd want to go closer to two or three drops in an ounce. Per, okay. Per ounce, yeah. For, for, yeah, per ounce for a 1% dilution. Then obviously, as you go up, if you want 2%, you double it. So um, for everybody else, that's 10 to 12 drops in the one ounce of carrier. Um, the math is actually fairly easy. Most of your roller balls um, are 10 milliliters. So they're a third of an ounce, approximately, because it really depends on, you know, glass weight. Yeah. Um, but most of your roller ball blends tend to be a third of an ounce, so 10 milliliters. So you want to divide that number by three. <laughs> so so when you're, you're talking, really only, when you're talking about a roller ball, which most people have, you're really only talking about a couple drops max. Literally two drops. Yeah. And if you're right. using one of the ones who has the bigger drops, you're talking one. So let's talk about, uh, so someone that is having, uh, some severe cramping, and they apply that, how frequently that day would they apply it? Or should they only do it one time? Huh? Oh, no, you can do that a few times a day. When you're working with low dilutions, you thankfully have the room to apply it more often. Um, it's kind of like taking a lower dose of something else and being able to take it two or three times a day um, versus a high dose. Um, a high dose might work right away and then taper off and then you can't do more because you're risking skin reactions and things like that. So by starting with a low dilution, you allow yourself that reapplication Mm -hmm. If you need to, um, if they're really, really bad at it, like if you're talking about a roller ball like this, if you do like two drops of lavender with the two drops of clary sage, that should help take the edge off a little bit better. Um, the clary sage really is for the balancing act of the hormones mm -hmm. to help prevent the pain in the first place. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Well, thank you. I'm sure there's a lot of women out there that are going to be grateful for that information, especially with the, when you're talking about the dilution portion of it, the, the people that are already using it, that's a really great 
tool to have, Hey, I need to maybe lessen the, no the number of, uh, <laughs> the drops. number of drops. Yeah. And, in um, here. Yeah. And when you're uh, really using aromatherapy, um, you can buy a lot of pre-made roller balls out there. Unfortunately, the companies consider it proprietary, how much the dilution rate is at. So you're not, so you would oh, not be no. privy to that information. Okay. Yeah. Right. You wouldn't yeah. Know. I, you can't, you don't know. They're like, nope, that's proprietary. That's our secret. I'm like, that's great, but I need to know what's safe. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> um, important. Yeah. It is, you know, um, there have been companies that have popped up with their special blends with oils in them that weren't listed in their ingredients list. That's problematic if somebody's aller actually allergic to it. And yes, you can be allergic to it. Um, another thing they like to tell us, you can't be allergic to it. Um, yes. That's People so interesting. Well, that's, yeah, I was going to say, that's fascinating that they would say that because um, you really, truly can be allergic to anything. I was I just, uh, I mean, this is an, a very, very obvious one, but people are so different. Poison ivy is just like, it's, it's a terrible example, but it's an example. No, but it, um, yes. She's highly allergic. She like looks at poison ivy and she breaks out this terrible that sucks. <laughs> I I don't think I am because at almost 32 years old, I would know by now because my mom has had it so many times. There's no way I haven't been exposed to it. I've never had a rash. Uh -huh. so, I mean, that's a plant. And I would think there's nothing wrong with it because I've never broken out into a rash, but you know? my mom looks at it and it's, you know, so yeah. no, that's exact. You know, every, literally there's pretty much nothing in this world. You can't end up having a problem with, um, yeah. whether it's using too much of it, like drinking water that can still hurt you. Yeah. Um, people, it amazes me that whole, you know, natural equal safe is just such a prolific problem right now yeah. because it's not just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe. Give it poison ivy, give it, you know, bee stings. Those are still technically natural. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly, it's, exactly. It, it still is natural, right? Um, yeah. You know, these things, just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as far as Pinterest, literally, I am so lucky in a way because I cannot get that Pinterest mom, you know, feeling like, I am not sticking up with all these other moms who are doing all these amazing things because I do not get on Pinterest <laughs> because it annoys me because in a rollerball like this, where we're talking about using two to four drops, they're talking about 70 mm. and I'm like, no one needs that much. Yeah. Um, if you really have something that serious going on in your life, you might want to go see a doctor, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it doesn't, if you're that bad, there's something bigger going on. You need to find an, the other root cause. Um, and a lot of cases when you're using that much, you're really just covering it up just like you would with Tylenol. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to just cover it up. You want to find the problem and fix it in the first place. Ooh, that's my Which favorite. is why they go to you. Yeah, exactly. thank you. That's exactly what I was going to say. Hey, let's get to the root problem, people. Exactly. That's no guess. Yeah. That's, I love that perspective. So, um, all right, so a lot of people have these oils at home. They might be changing. They might be listening to this and be like, oh my gosh, I need to change my dilutions. I need to fix this. Mm -hmm. um, so where are some places that they can go for research, whether it be uh, your website or research sites to get more information or even books? I mean, what do you recommend? Books. Oh, books. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> when it comes down to it, like I said, I have a good resource list um, on the notes section of my business Facebook page. Um, and then I will be, um, I'm revamping the website. So stick to the Facebook page for now, everybody. Um, give me the rest of summer to fix it. And that's the uh, facebook.com slash Duncan clan, clan health helpers. helpers. Okay. So that's, yes. And I'll um, put that in the show notes. Yes. And you can also look it up, like I said, uh, search it in the search bar, holistic health helper, LLC. That's Perfect. the biz. Easy to find me. Um, when it comes to books, if you're, hold on, we're going to grab I didn't put enough books by my side. I put a few books by my side. Not enough. We're moving. <sighs> There's never enough books. There's, um, yeah, you, yeah, uh, about that. I never have enough books. All right. So when we're just starting, whoosh, now we're going to see a really pretty picture of me. All right. Is that backwards or is that oh, right? I can read that. The complete okay, book of essential oils and aromatherapy. Yes. So Valerie uh, and Wormwood. Wormwood. Yeah, we like that book. It's a good book right there. Um, if you are pregnant... Um, aromatherapy practice in, in, in midwifery. Yep. That one okay. check affirmative. Um, if you really want a sciencey book, you can go with essential oil safety by T Robert Tisserand. Um, it is a textbook. It is hard to read for a lot of people. People go out and they spend the hundred plus 90 bucks on it. Um, and then they're like, how do I read it? It's not meant to be read page to cover, you know, cover to cover. Resource book. Resource. It is a huge resource book, but it does go over 
everything as far as what is what studies we have seen up until its printed date, obviously, um, as far as what can be used um, and what problems we've seen in study. Uh, a lot of problems that we see, though, is that most research studies have been done are on animals. And as awesome as that is, that we have any studies at all, that doesn't always correlate to sure. humans. Um, so we can see one number that should be able to go up high and all of a sudden we're killing people somewhere down here. Um, and that has happened. <laughs> like, oh, we should have been able to use this much. And in reality, we can only use this much because, well, we're not rats. <laughs> Are you um, sure? Are you sure? There might be a few genetic differences. That's really interesting. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, it is very important that, okay, you, you start on animals, obviously you want to get to a certain point of information there, right. but then, I mean, it does need to, you do need to translate that into, does it still work Apply. on a human? There is a right. difference. Yeah. There is a sure. huge difference. And, you know, um, be thankful for ethics boards, but also, you know, want to kick ethics boards in the shin <laughs> because you can't, we can't find out, you yeah. know, until it's, you know, like, oh, we, you know, two emergency room cases is all we're able to find out because we're not allowed to risk that person's life. Mm. Or in the case of pregnancy, you can't risk the fetus. Sure. Um, so that, you know, there's this whole balancing act of mm -hmm. research that you have to be careful. You have to be careful. Um, another good one to start with is the heart of aromatherapy. Um, the, uh, Andrea uh, owns Aroma Head Institute, which is where I got my first, my basic certification and my advanced. And then I've done other stuff outside of her stuff. But um, she's an amazing teacher and she lays everything out in a really easy to learn way. Her website is aromahead.com and she has free courses on there. Um, and then she also has obviously paid courses on there. Um, but she's a great, great resource. Uh, that website is fantastic for learning. Um, and then, you know, as far as companies go, I have a few that I've listed. I am not married to any one company. Um, I'm just not. No, it's like expecting Walmart to have the best of everything or Target to have the best of everything. They just don't. Um, I don't buy some things at Kroger. Sometimes I go to Fresh Time or I go here or there. You know, no, but no one company has the best of everything. So I don't expect essential oils companies who are unregulated in the federal, federal world as it is to be the same way. Um, so if you're just starting out, plant therapy is amazing. Um, just remember that you don't have to buy all the oils. <laughs> There's this huge like buy all the oils thing. And you don't. Find out what your main problems are or situations are. Buy the oils that work for that. Mm -hmm. Use your carrier oils. Um, keep your oils in the fridge. Um, especially. Oh, I never, never heard of that. Okay. Especially your citrus oils um, because their shelf life is so short. Keeping them cool and dark is the best way to keep them alive longer. Um, <laughs> no, I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> I say alive because like, I'm active, got, I guess, active. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't want them oxidizing, so you don't want that oxygen getting introduced because they are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So you add more oxygen, they start breaking bonds. They start breaking bonds, it's not working. Um, and that's once again because they are chemicals at the end of the day. Um, they're not some amazing, all omnipresent <laughs> you know I love that you're like don't go buy 50 at a time kind of work on it I have a, a traditional Chinese medicine book well I have two kind of uh TCM like resource books mm -hmm. and I was struggling with something uh I don't know maybe a month ago and I was like you know what I'm gonna research this and I pulled out my book and both of them listed like one thing and I was like well I'll try that one thing and sure exactly. enough it worked it was awesome um <laughs> But I didn't go, you know, I'll buy the whole book, you know, I'm going to go right. get all the herbs, you know, it is important buy all the to know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do extra research, especially, um, I hate having to say it, but especially if you're with one of the two main MLMs, their research all comes from their researchers. Um, these are people that are paid for by them to try and come up with an answer that they want that's going to sell more oils. Um, third party research is the way to go. Um, there are Facebook groups that are dedicated to third-party testing of the oils, making sure the companies that say they have pure oils legitimately do. And most companies, not the ones on Amazon, except for plant therapy, um, most companies actually still put out a really good, qual pure oil. Quality is very subjective. Um, 
you know, there are certain numbers, percentages of certain oils that makes it pure. Um, and then, you know, you might like it if it's higher in this percentage, or it might work better for you if it's higher in this. Um, it might not work for you if it's a lower. So being able to see the purity reports is great, even for the common at-home user, because if it works really well for you, you want to be able to recreate that. So if you run out of that bottle, you want to be able to buy a bottle very similar because you know it works for you. So... Yeah, that's really interesting. So what if, what if someone, uh, you know, they want to they wanna sort of be able to utilize this in a safe way, like you're talking about. They want to be able to get a quality oil. Um, do you, I, I, I don't know the answer to this question before I ask it. Do you have any sort of consulting practice where somebody can um, reach out to you and say, I have this issue, and, you know, they set up, I don't know, like a 30-minute call with you, or, you know, what, what kind of, how do you work with people? Oh, absolutely. Um, so I do, um, consulting, consulting. Um, I have my classes that are available online. Um, but if you have a situation specifically and you don't want to buy all the oils or you don't want to be guessing around trying to figure it out or buying a million books, um, you are more than welcome <laughs> to talk to me. Um, I do a free 15 minute first call. We go over the kind of gloss over the situation. Um, and I can tell you whether or not aromatherapy may even help. Um, in a so lot your of cases, answer wouldn't always be yes. Oh no, absolutely. A lot of times I go, hey, there's something underlying there, or hey, we might want to look. You might want to look to herbs instead. Um, here's you know some other people that you can contact because, like I said, aromatherapy really is reaching for the medicine cabinet. It these oils are so so potent and so strong that you don't always have to go there. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you can start with the food you eat or you can start by seeing, you know, what's going on in your gut. You can increase your yogurt or some like you can fix it without covering up the situation, mm -hmm. which essential oils, as much as they can get to a root cause, they're not the first best first option. Um, they are there kind of once again as complementary, not alternative. Yeah, I, I love know. that. Yeah. That's a, that's a good distinction. So yes, just, just contact me via Facebook um, or on my website. You can just link me there. And then um, the consults, um, them set, the 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes is free where we go over stuff. And then my consults are normally an hour plus and you give me your entire health history first. Um, that way I can make sure any medications you're using, um, anything that's been going on in your life otherwise might not be the root cause of the situation. Awesome. I love that approach. That's wonderful that you kind of take everything. You have to look at it's what I do. I All take, of it. you know, people, I say, okay, I'm going to send you your intake forms and be prepared because they are long. They're long. <laughs> yes, my you intake. You know pretty much everything about the person before. Yeah, and when I, and, you know, when I list, like, you know, I ask for supplements and I write herbal, you know, vitamins, essential oils. I want mm -hmm. literally everything. everything you put in your body. Yeah. written down. Yep. Why? Because it literally could be X is interacting with Y and we take, you know, we take away Y cause it wasn't needed anyway. I don't know why you were taking it in the first place. Oh wait, your neighbor Susie told you to. <laughs> um, and you take that away and all of a sudden you're better. And it's like, see, we didn't even have to add in Z yeah. to this problem. We just took away Y and that fixed it. Um, so many people want that band aid fix it now approach. And sometimes it just needs time. And you yeah. need to get to the root, get to Love the bottom that. first. I not say that better. So what are the online programs that you have go into? Do you have a couple? What are the topics? What's the general focus of them? Yeah. So online, um, I ha have a website, um, or a school, if you will, on teachable. Um, you also have the link to that. It's the apothecary institute.teachable.com. Something just fell. <laughs> um, and on there, I have a free intro to essential oils class. It goes over a lot of what we discussed here. Great. Um, and then each class after that, um, it, there's a fee for, but there's um, a natural living class. So talking about making cleaners and products and things like that. Um, there's the, obviously a pregnancy labor and delivery class. There's a more in-depth aromatherapy class. Um, and there's one for doulas specifically. Um, because doulas don't always know what to look for. Um, it actually doesn't certify them in anything um, because for the most part, if you really want to use aromatherapy as a doula, you should get a true aromatherapy certification, not just my, you know, I love my class, but it's only max of two hours. That's not enough info for you. Like it kind of just gives them an idea of what their patients might bring to them or their clients might bring to them. Um, 
and a good way to answer their questions. Okay. So. Oh, great. Well, it sounds like a lot of resources. That's awesome. You're like, Woo, I got a lot. there's a lot on your website, guys. Go check it out. Yes. Um, all right. So before we wrap up, you have your, I'm going to reiterate here for, for everybody listening, um, facebook.com slash Duncan Clan Health Helpers, or her website is www.theapothecaryinstitute.com, or is it yep. .teachable.com? Uh, no, that's the school. Teachable oh, is the school site. Gotcha. So, all right. So you can, get to, is, you can get to the school site via the regular website. Perfect. Um, and I'm updating videos now, so. Oh, oh isn't that fun? Yeah I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm starting that process shortly for my website as well. It's uh, a lot of work. It's a um, lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work. So um, is there anything else off the top of your head that you want to share before we kind of wrap up here? We, I know we've covered a lot of really great, useful, applicable information for everybody. Ooh, applicable, that's a fun word. Um, no, just, you know, as I truly do love aromatherapy, and I know that sometimes I come off as, you know, you don't need to use it, but you know, I truly am that honest upfront. Okay. No, actually you don't. Um, I never try to keep anybody away from aromatherapy if that's what they really want to use. But a lot of the time there's just a better answer. And I really look at that holistic health. Um, thank you. My business name, you know, I look at the whole situation. Um, and it's not just about this one fix. It really is about everything else. And, you know, that's why I'm not stopping with just aromatherapy certification and I'm not stopping with my RN. Um, you know, it really is about addressing their whole person. And sometimes aromatherapy is the, a great fix and sometimes it's not. <laughs> and I will never steer you towards aromatherapy because it's as much, I love what I do, but I don't need to do what I do. Um, I choose to. Yeah. Uh, my husband is active duty. We make, he covers all of our bills. I do what I do because I love to help you. I'm not really out to make a ton of money off of it. I do make some, yes. Help me get my kids through college, please. Um, <laughs> that's but, important, yeah. <laughs> but that's not my focus. My focus yeah. is about you and helping you get to where you want to go. So that's, that I'm, makes a good practitioner right there. You know, I might tell you not to come with aromatherapy, <laughs> you know, and that's perfectly fine by me. If aromatherapy is not the answer, I will tell you so. Awesome. I don't hide behind it. So. Ah, I love it. Well, thanks for sharing all of that, Amber. I really do Thank think you. it was helpful. I think a lot of people are going to get new tips and maybe change some of their delusions and the way they look at and use oils. So that's awesome. So thanks Thank for coming Thank you so much today. for the opportunity. Yeah, I loved having you. Thank you. Have a great day.